Yeah, spot fires galore down here. We're talking about 60, 70 metre flame height. 60, 70 metre flame height. Yeah, spot fires galore down here. We're talking about 60, 70 metre flame height. 60, 70 metre flame height. So look how far the RFS was stretched. We knew they couldn't be everywhere. Swept all the way down through Charlie's Forest, across the highway, all along behind Tudor Valley Way, burning the monga, just total annihilation. We lost our house in the fires on the Friday. Uh, we didn't stay because we weren't prepared. We, we couldn't fight the fires. The fire is quite large, it is out of control, it is uncontrollable for this point of time, and you need to be preparing for it. Fire danger rating is expected to reach severe. When the wind changed and the timing was awful, um, yeah, we lost that one, we got overrun. You know, getting prepared to, to fight the fire, but the day it came, it was just, it was so hot and they predicted big winds and southerlies. Hell of a mess, cars, cars off the road, fire everywhere. And then we had a fire, and we lost the house, and we lost the sheds, and we lost the farm sheds. It was just so hard to, to see that and think that, that, that all we've done. Are you right for to head off or relocate or call it a night? Um, what would you like to do, mate? Uh, yeah, you can you can peel a couple off, mate. Um, we're almost at the end of this witching hour, over. Don't, don't, don't sort of feel that you know Armageddon's coming. We're going to be looking at moving on from here. So don't panic if there's some music for a while. We're simply waiting on the next reports to come in. As soon as we know. You will know. Take care. I'm lost in the dark. Where is the spot for my love? I'm lost in the night. Holding the light of my Heavens opened and closed As well I might have supposed And I am left in this abandon So far removed from all that I have planned on My days have grown so lonely For I have loved just to, just to give you a scope, that's us there, that's where 620 Bottle Wang is. Yep. About a K west of our, uh, sorry, east of our position. Where's our house? Up here. That's, okay. that, that cluster there is our house. Right. So that's probably uh, 4.5 Ks okay. north, northeast. So. Stay here and fight. Stay here. Yep. Stay here and fight. surrounding areas. This is Roger Hoskins, our local weatherman. What can you tell us about what's happening today, Roger? Well, um, as of right now, this is 7.45, it's still 27 degrees, this is the temperature, and it's still 18% humidity, which is extraordinarily dry. But partly means that the, particularly grass flowers, grass fuels, are extraordinarily dry and it's still warm and that's why the fire is making its own wind. So I've arrived down in Araluan at my friend's place to check on him and his wife and it started raining. 
And so the fire has started uh, its weather pattern. It makes a cloud formation that can actually cause the rain. So you can see it on the car here, but it's uh, not much and it's actually just about stopped. Nowhere near any sort of rain that will have effect on the fire. But um, as you can see, there's the clouds. Um, the smoke from the fire, just thick as. We started a bit of a, a uh, fleet called the Mosquito Army. I uh, found out about these fires were kicking off and a good mate of mine, Stu, actually we all live together so we uh, got onto Stu and said, come on mate, I've got a 2,000 litre water tank pump, we'll put it together and just start fighting fires. Basically Bulge says, hey we're going to chuck a 2,000 litre tank and a pump on the back of my truck and go uh, get spot fires. I'm like, yeah, let's do this, let's jump in and uh, you know. I'm not anyone special, I'm not, any, I'm not part of the RFS or anything like that, but uh, those guys have got some really strained resources at the moment, you know, we're not getting a lot down here and every little bit helps, so I thought, yeah, we'll jump in this truck, head out there. So, this is the containment line we're on and the RFS is up there uh, stopping and there's a few mosquitoes here trying to do that as well. So it seems to be getting a little bit out of hand. It's like a bit of a war zone, isn't it? Here we are waiting with the mosquito crew. The, the big fire trucks got called off. We've got to stay here and guard this paddock. Um, it's probably one of the best paddocks in the area, actually, the, for the feed and for the length of food. This also is a big spot where the fire can spot, can go from here over to the other side of the King's Highway. So there's Holly, Stu, and a whole heap of mosquitoes all just wandering and checking the paddock. The fire's only just over there. What's going on, Kath? Just waiting. Is that the life of a mosquito? Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't that yesterday. It was all action. Uh, so what we've done to try and coordinate all the, the uh, different um, assets that we've got available to us in the Mosquito Army is we've created a bit of a whiteboard here so we know where people are roughly and what time they're at there and what kind of capacity they're holding as well. Uh, that way we kind of cover off that we're not losing everyone to one, one fire or another, that we've always got somebody in different locations around the area. Um, but we've got a few people that we haven't heard from yet so we're, we're just waiting to hear back from that. The main way we're passing around information is uh, we've created a WhatsApp group which is pretty active. So. Um, most of us are just following that WhatsApp group and, and listening into that and uh, we get information passed which is like up to the minute information so we're not having to wait for anything to come through the, uh, the radios. We are still listening to the radios but um, yeah, most of the stuff between us, between the Mosquito Army is coordinated through the WhatsApp and through boards like this. We are kind of leading the support network because as a, when I say we, I mean the Mosquito crew. Um, we kind of get there and we're turning up at the end of the action to help or we're there right at the start of the action so it doesn't get too big before the big trucks turn up and put the fires out. Straight through this fence, gate. Yep, down. Go up, around. Yeah, gate. Yep. And you and then, can get straight into there. Okay, so what we need to do then is we can't stop it coming through the trees, but we can stop it at the paddock. Yeah. Because that's where we do all our best work, on the grass. Yep. So we'll stay there on the grass and that way we can guarantee that it's not going to get here. Yeah. So if you want to get to the other side, you can go this side of the dam, straight yep. on that side of the paddock. Yep. And there's where that drum is over there or that metal thing, you can get across over there. Okay. There's only two places you can cross the ditch. Oh, where the metal? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Awesome. So, like, and then, yeah, obviously this gate. Excellent. Well, we've got Matt, Matt Thane's coming. He's going to back us up. Yep. So I'm, I'm confident, like, with us. And Matt, like we've done this so many times now, yeah, yeah. we're almost like professionals. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> we'll sorry. just stay, we'll stay together as a team, and we'll get this. Emotionally, I find it quite uplifting. I'm actually um, proud to be here and be part of this. I know that 
It is um, a lot of people are, are really feeling a lot of pain at the moment. But I think if m another side of how I look at it is I'm proud that we're part of it because I know we're going to get through it and, and it's making our community a lot tighter because I know I'm going myself through a lot of problems at the moment. Um, this has helped me to get over my own stuff and realise that there's actually a lot bigger picture out there and that bigger picture is something that I've forgotten about and that is community. The fire's a disaster but they're also a new beginning. From one door closes, another one opens, I suppose. It's, it's good, we're banding together and I know we'll get through it because we're already starting to talk about it and it's not even over yet. Um, with some changes to the erratic fire behaviour, um, we're getting spot fires that are coming out, uh, which under the current conditions we would expect to be running uh, eastwards, and they're turning around and running westwards. So okay. we're, we're getting all sorts of strange things happening, but um, it's, it's uh, the flukes of the wind can change just as easily. Yes. Uh, so we need everybody in those areas to be aware that, that, that this fire is quite large, it is out of control, it is uncontrollable at this point in time, and, and you need to be preparing for it. Okay. Just, um, I mean, we've been talking about people getting out. Um, what about animals? You can see the their, their little scars left over from burn marks. That is ember, of course. <laughs> this is her little pouch. Hey, come on. And she bites, so just watch your fingers. You alright? <laughs> you did perfect. We only do wombats ourselves, but we do all the rescues. So we've rescued um, two little burnt possums, half a dozen wombats, two wallabies, two or three kangaroos. It's been um, just total annihilation, really. So apart from the, the threat of the fire and the constant stresses and the, and the decision fatigue that everybody seems to uh, be suffering, um, it's been uh, just disastrous for wildlife and wildlife carers. As you said, that's what we want. We want them to be a bit standoffish. So he's getting a bit crinky. Feeling pretty fragile, really, and that you just feel under siege. It just gets harder and harder to decide what to do, when to go, when not to go, what to pack, what not to pack. Not quite knowing how to react, uh, not knowing w when when the next fire is going to start, um, especially on hot days like today. Um, what's going to flare up today? Well, when you're listening to the Firecom, they will shout out grid references and those grid references refer to breakout points and other hot spots so you would be able to plot them and figure kind of keep an eye on track of the, where the fire is. Um, at the time when it's coming around Bandera it was all creeping up this valley and we knew that there was hot spots all up Sheep Station Creek here um, which w had the potential to come back and bite us which it did two days later. So. We need to get down and, and patrol that Kuma Kuma line yep, absolutely. and have a look. So nice. let's go let's go have a look. No use in sitting here. So yep, okay. and waiting. Good call man, we're going. Get okay. in on it. Yep, let's go. Alright Dave, are we driving we meant to be driving into this? Barbecue. Yeah, if you can repeat that, Floss has got a two-way on, she will receive. So, 28 Warrigan Lane, Golden Fox and, Rich, and uh, Richard and Mary Stakes on Warrigan Lane. That's uh, about to get the next sort of five minutes, Erica. Yep, copy that, she received that, thank you. Oh, tell you what, uh, it's getting pretty thick, so... Um, Are you okay? What's, yeah, what's look, going at the moment here? we're okay, but uh, we've just checked on a few of our neighbours, so... Um, we think we're all okay, it's just a waiting game now. We know that wind's going to shift any minute. The neighbour over the road, it's got spot fires coming from the fire we've been protecting this house at. We need to go there immediately. Well, the fire was about three k's behind us before, and now it's uh, just behind us. So we're just waiting with the RFS 
and the other mosquitoes and uh, see what we can do to defend uh, Adam's house. Hey mate, we've got big spot fires over there on the hill trying to take over but we all had at the top of that. We've got the young fellas in the other mosquitoes on the other side of the hill. They're getting on top of that so there's a lot of action here at the moment. She was woke us up at 1.30 in the morning and said, Dad, I can see the fire coming over the hill. We better, we've been told we better pack up and get all our best stuff out. We put the cars and filled them all up with stuff from the house, all our favourite stuff, that things that the kids had made when they were at school and paintings and photographs. The next few days after that, still the fire hadn't come and we put sprinklers on the roof and, you know, getting prepared to, to fight the fire. But, the day it came, it was just, it was so hot. It was just so hard to, to see that and think that, that, that all we'd done, 40 years we've, we've lived in this house and we put all our work into this house. Every year we'd put another bit on, new tin, and then we'd, do up the floor, or we'd put a kitchen in, a new kitchen and a new bathroom, and, and then we had a fire. And we lost the house, and we lost the sheds, and they were just all gone. Yeah, you lose everything. It's just devastating. I was driving around there one night, and I thought I'd go and see my friend, Gilles. And when I got to his house, I just, I said, you've got such a beautiful house. I said, and I have, it's just so nice, and I just cried and cried, and he just, he gave me a big hug, and he just said, oh, Con, I'm so sorry. And there's nothing you can do, but you, you just, you got your memories, and you got your friends. There was little patches around the farm here that didn't get burnt, which was, was a miracle we can start again. There's always next year and that, that's a farmer's lot, you know, like if we didn't do so good this year, next year will be a better year. I've been burnt out. I've lost my seed and my cedars, but um, if it ever rains again, we'll start again.